The Governor's Victory Bell Trophy is back home in Minnesota. And coming up on Gopher Football with Jerry Kill, we go inside Minnesota's fourth straight Big Ten win. We've got work to do and so forth, but uh, we're certainly uh, taking the steps that are needed uh, to, to continue to uh, build our program, so to speak, brick by brick. And Coach Kill shows you what worked in the film room. This is a great job by David. You know, he feels Josh, you know, slip and he slides right behind yep. him. It's your weekly look inside Golden Gopher football and it starts right now. Welcome to the latest edition of Gopher Football with Jerry Kill. It's your weekly look inside the Golden Gopher Football Program, and I'm your host, Natalie Nias. The Golden Gophers are on fire. With Saturday's 24-10 win, they beat Penn State, claimed the Governor's Victory Bell Trophy, and improved to 8-2. To take us through the Big Ten win, Mike Max joins head coach Jerry Kill in the Hall of Fame room. Thanks, Natalie. Jerry Kill. The man of the hour, of course, after a big win on Saturday, and maybe more publicity came out of it for the dance afterwards, Coach. Well, <laughs> You're familiar uh, with the term uh, viral? I think that went viral. Yeah, I, I think that uh, there's some people in uh, our office or whoever's video, and there's some things are supposed to be sacred. So I, <laughs> I, I guess nothing that you do in this day and age that uh, you, you have to be very careful. So I've uh, taken uh, a lot of heat for that, but uh, you know what? I, I, you know, you got to enjoy the moments and have a little fun with the kids. They need to see a different side of you. And then, uh, you know, it's really the most I've done about three or four weeks. So I, I bent down farther than probably should. I'm a little sore on Sunday. So, <laughs> but you know, it, this is it, we've talked about this whole process and the evolving. I'm, one of the things that you mentioned more than once is you enjoy the wins more maybe now than ever because you realize that how tough they are to come by and what these moments are. And, and it's not that you're not going to look ahead eventually. It's not that the notepad won't come out soon enough, but you really want to be able to savor a moment. Absolutely. I don't think there's any question about it. I, I would tell you that, uh, that um, you know, again, it, it's, that's the one great thing about being in the press box and besides being able to coach and see everything is to be able to watch after a ball game. And, it, and it's, it's, it's neat to watch the people and, and um, you know, I'm so happy for them because you know, of the years. It's yeah, been and you can observe yeah, that. Yeah, I can observe it up that. there. And, uh, but then the kids, you know, I mean, you know, uh, from all the kids that have played, I got a chance to see Marquise uh, on a Sunday. He came up and seen me and he's as happy and, you know, Eric Decker texting you. And I mean, it's the, the whole state and everybody that's played here, uh, they're a part of it. And, uh, you know, and our coaching staff, the job they've done in the kids. So it's neat to see uh, all the people that uh, have been through good times here and tough times and so forth, uh, you know, be a huge part of it. And, and we still got work to do. We, we both know that. We've got work to do and so forth. But uh, we're certainly uh, taking the steps that are needed uh, to, to continue to uh, build our program, so to speak, brick by brick. Yeah, you know, I, I want to just go to one moment that uh, you're familiar with, but you weren't there because uh, people know the story from last year when, when your brother-in-law came and, and your wife's uh, brother was in town and, and he suffered a heart attack at a game and passed subsequently. And I was walking down on the field there as the game was ending. You were up in the press box and I saw your wife and, um, and she was emotional for a number of different reasons, but she had her whole family with her and it was the one year anniversary. And as I looked at them, and they look on the field and they're about a victory celebration is about to take place. And I could only imagine what was going through their minds and all that they had seen and the smiles and the tears and all that. I mean, it's hard to explain what football and sport can do, you know, to bring people together too, but to see that and to feel that it was just, it was awe inspiring. Well, I, I think you know that uh, Rebecca's got a lot of respect for you and, and so forth, but it, uh, you know, and we didn't really say too much because, you know, it's a sensitive situation, yeah. very hard, but uh, they, all her family was, was here. Yeah. Every, every one of them, I think it was 18 of them And to here. see how good they felt yeah, at that moment, absolutely. you know? Absolutely, and they, they, they needed to feel good yeah. because of uh, the situation because a year ago, you know, in the same place and, uh, um, and after the game, it was a terrible tragedy. Yep. But, uh, you know, Rebecca's been through a lot. Yes, she has. And uh, she's hung in there and and uh, I'm proud of her and uh, you know that like you said the game of football brings uh, a lot of different situations together and 
And I think the, when we beat Nebraska, I think there's a gentleman that kissed the field on the 50-yard line. And well, so, you know, and I add to that because together. you're not aware of this, but so they're all sitting down there waiting for the game to end and the celebration to begin, and the students are chanting, Jerry, Jerry. Now, the students didn't realize that your in-laws were all sitting there and the profound effect that that had on them as they smiled and cried and did everything together. But, I mean, you, as you looked around, you said, only in sport can something like this happen. Ab absolutely. And I, I tell you what, I... I've never been called Jerry before. I've always been called <laughs> coach. And, uh, but it's, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, you know, the state students have been unbelievable to us. And, and you don't know how much, you know, again, nobody knows how much uh, impact people have on each other. And yeah. certainly, certainly at a sporting event, there's a lot more to the story than just the story. And uh, so, uh, you know, it was a, a great moment, not only for her family and, and uh, everybody, that, that was there. Yeah. It's it's all you know, as we always said, winning. Uh, and, you know, they feel it's not important. It makes us all a lot happier. It just I don't think does, and, a question. and you kind of forget that until you see it. You uh, know, you kind of forget the impact of winning until you see it in front of you again, and you realize the difference. You know, and what that does for everybody in conversation and everything else. I didn't mean to put football on the back burner because it was a good workmanlike Big Ten football game, and offensively, what you did was. I sense a lot of what you've always envisioned that you would do. Get a lead, command the in, and then dictate kind of the terms of the game from there. Well, I, you know, I, again, I, our offensive staff, I thought did a good job. We didn't punt in the first half. Uh, we were able to control the football game. Uh, the second half, you know, we had a rough spot there. We turned the ball over, uh, but we recovered. And it all goes back. We had possession time, and uh, we moved the ball when needed. Defense stepped up, and then, you know, our, our punter and kicker you know, did, a, did a great job. And I'll credit that to Sid because. Uh, yeah, he's he, been working on that for yeah, a long time. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, tried, he's tried to fire me two years in a row over the kicking <laughs> game. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give Sid the, the kudos on that. But you also get, you know, David Cobb, uh, as he's emerged as your number one running back, and he had two runs there. And, then, and then they, I don't even think either one of them led to a touchdown, but they took you out of the danger zone, a 39-yarder and a 44-yarder, so that you could play the field possession uh, game. Yeah, critical runs because they had us pinned and uh, had execution up front, and then David made a good cut. And, and you're right, it changed field position. And, and uh, you know, we were able to... You know, Penn State, we kept them down deep, and, and then we were able to play over the top of Robinson. He, we didn't give up the big play there. You know, they ran the ball good at times, but you, you give up something to take something away. Yep. And we'd rather have them do that than, than beat us in one play or two, and that's what they've done to people. And Philip Nelson and Max Williams, a good combination throughout. No, no doubt, and, and uh, it's an, you know, incredible the year Max is having and, and Philip getting him the ball, but, uh, you know, uh, Max, uh, I'm glad we have him for three more years. There's no question about that. When we return, Mike Max will join Coach Kill in the film room to break down the top plays from Saturday's big win. This is a great job by David. You know, he feels Josh, you know, slip, and he slides right behind yep. him. 